you for joining me on this quick first look of the Tumbral Storm. This is a ship that's deep in the development pipeline, but is technically still a concept. It is part of the Invicus launch week here uh, for 2953-2023 slash in real world times. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to my long subscribers for sticking around. And I just wanted to note one thing. It is a size 3 laser repeater on top. So I talk about it a couple times in here where you have that pair, as I say, of energy cannons on that turret. Technically, it is one size 3 laser repeater turret. So I just wanted to note that that specifically. You can see it in the plans right here. We're going to go right into the video. I'm going to just pause the video in different spots to comment on the armor, to comment on the use cases, and also discuss how this single person recon tank is usable and how it would look in for works. Thanks again and enjoy. Talk about the concept vehicle that we're introducing at Invictus launch week, the Tumble Storm. The Tumbrel Storm is a light slash scout tank from Tumbrel. In a lot of combined armed forces, you rely on uh, reconnaissance on the ground to let you know what's coming ahead. And whilst we do have an array of ground vehicles that can do this role, not very many of them are as heavily armoured as a tank. And sometimes, Constance goes a bit sideways and you need some firepower to help get you out of that situation. So the Storm is really uh, excels in this scenario. It can be ahead of the fleet on the ground, engage targets and hold its ground before the main force of ground vehicles arrives for backup. Let's take a look at that for a minute. This ballista right here. Uh, being popped by a storm is a pretty interesting use case. Notice they're carefully not showing a Nova getting knocked out or something like that. Um, my understanding is that if multiple of these ganged up on a Nova, um, that it will basically be able to be defeated if they get lucky. Uh, but the storm with its smaller main armament of its dual cannon on top, uh, with its energy system, is not exactly well suited against a main tank. But that's not really its job. As John Crew pointed out, it is mainly geared towards doing exactly what they said it's going to do, and that is do recon under fire if necessary. And what's implied by some of these concepts is the ability to act in a way that's kind of a force multiplier for a single player where it can take out targets of opportunity, like, for example, ballista that are acting as anti-air systems and such, and, and, and um, indirect fire systems. And that would be an excellent, excellent use of such a, a high-speed light tank. One aspect that we wanted to change from the traditional tank and Nova setup is making this energy weapon-based. So it had a much greater independence from the, the main task force on the ground and that it wasn't constrained by ballistic ammunition. So it has an energy auto cannon on top, uh, twin barreled, uh, to help lay down firepower, really only constrained by the size of its capacitors and power plant. The storm is really designed for supporting um, Novas in attacks. It can take on most other ground vehicles. If you're brave, you can take on a Nova. With Notice the entry point at the middle of the vehicle, directly dead center between the treads. This actually has a nice little bit of cover. If you accidentally engage the exit of vehicle option and then you were put on out, you have at least some cover from the sides. So somebody would have to be directly facing you or on, an, on a decent angle to be able to get a shot on you for that moment. This is a nice little bit of cover. Also running up to the vehicle to engage and open this large door and wait for the animation to proc, uh, you could basically take some cover behind these treads. Sometimes things aren't perfect, but giving yourself a little sense of perimeter and a little bit of defense can help better than nothing. With it, but you probably want to bring a friend or two to help even the fight. I received the task to complete a new vehicle. I was told to do a tank, uh, most precisely something that would have become a killer of killers. We had to go back to the origins of Tumbrel and let this new tank look less like the Nova tank and more like the Cyclone. So it was important to get back that aggressiveness and that dynamics that the Cyclone had. So we opted for something a little less classical and went on a design that is absolutely more related to the manga and anime's world. When people see the storm for the first time, I want them to feel scared. There is no flimsy paneling, there is no 
um, beautiful refined surface. This is just optimal and very, very dynamic. So we don't have a lot of parallel lines. We have a lot of uh, X's and V's, very strong shapes that Line what is uh, popularly uh, recognized as dynamic and aggressive. The interiors of the storm will feel really. Uh Notice the component boxes as noted. You can see the seat again instead of the animation where it showed it out. This is when it's inside seated. And it is nice to see a weapons rack. Uh, some of these plates that you see kind of moving around, uh, these are designed to. I would assume designed to, uh, if a hit gets through the exterior armor, these would help chop it up a little bit, help brunt the hit. Um, so we're looking at a couple different things here. And then in this section, these are the actual treads. So you've got treads, you've got plating that's like in layers that doesn't show it well in this picture. I shouldn't have paused it here if I was going to talk about the layered, uh, the side skirts and everything <laughs> and the layered plating. <laughs> and also you have the system that's designed to get this seat out into a, into a pretty uh, pretty impressive little tight squeeze here. Cause you got to remember there's armor on top of this space, uh, where the, where the pilot would be sitting and driver and gunner all in one seat. That's an important classification. The vehicle is smaller. It only fits a single person, and therefore it is practical, a little more practical than Nova Tank. However, it does lose the utility of having jump seats as far as we can tell so far. Uh, full of pipes, of fabric, of mechanical stuff. It have to look basically ventral, like you have just been eaten by a machine. So what we have is a uh, very composed design, something that is uncommon in the tank we know today. So what we wanted to achieve when you look at the storm is fast. Strike fast, move fast, do everything fast, no need to rely on a crew. I like that it looks a bit like an animal. It's very, uh, very snaky or looks a bit like a crocodile. Now, of course, the big question everyone always asks for every new concept promotion is when? When will it go into production? Well. Let's go now to the vehicle team in our Los Angeles studio and find out more. The problem is where my, my story goes is always I will identify all of the issues that I have to overcome first and then like, build a plan for breaking them down. So I'm trying to think of a way of phrasing it, you know? We had a lot of cleaning up to do to make sure it was worthy of the engine, it's ready for engine, it's not going to break anything when it goes in there. And that was what most of the initial white box work we did, at least from an art side. For design, we were more concerned about alleviating a lot of the issues we knew were present with the Nova, to like traversing on um, uneven terrain, exiting the hangar. Um, these are issues we solved first, rather than waited until later in production and realized there were more difficult tasks to um, overcome. So most recently, we finished Grey Box. Uh, Notice the armor side skirts that are kind of like a layered effect. And this is important because a lot of this vehicle is not always going to be facing the enemy. The enemy may be trying to flank this vehicle and having this protection where it's extremely hard to hit the treads may become extremely beneficial in the future. Especially when we have physicalized damage that hits specific components, that hits specific things. These treads are going to be a mobility kill if these treads are knocked out. Additionally, it's nice to see two sets of treads on each side of the vehicle. If one set of treads is knocked out, in theory, it still has three treads to march around on, including one set on the, on the one side. As a reminder, tanks have a serious deficiency. If one side of the vehicle it, treads are knocked out, then the vehicle can only drive in circles. It's just the way treads work. However, because this vehicle has the treads split into two distinct pods, unless there is like a power plant hit or something else, you could still have a tread blown off and assumedly much slower still be able to move. In particular, move in reverse and pull yourself back behind a rock or something else uh, and get some cover between you and what's trying to, to take you down, like a Nova or uh, soldiers with anti-tank weaponry, etc., etc. We completed all the animations. Currently, I am doing a material and detail pass on the...
so we can see some of the components that it, that it basically has protected behind these gearings. You can see some of the venting. I'm guessing this is engine exhaust, uh, sorry, power plant exhaust, uh, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but it is nice to see all these animations are being completed. It shows how far along in the process that this vehicle is already. And uh, during the ISC Invicus all all team uh, ship all ship talk roundtable, they mentioned this was deep, deep, deep into the into the development cycle. So if they don't bring that up, just understand it already is. Tread housings for the Tumbril Storm. This thing has challenged me in ways I haven't been challenged before in working in uh, the game industry. For example, the treads took a couple different iterations, uh, so we got right and be able to get like the right movement as it deforms to the uh, the ground planes. This ship is definitely more organic than anything I'm used to. And I suppose it's like its own challenges, but it's been a learning process. The yeah, just to continue on to LOD Zero, finalizing all of the art assets, making sure everything is going to be correct for when we um, move on to all. That's pretty slick, but I wish this hold is held more than one long arm, preferably two. Like a short range weapon system and a long range weapon would be a nice touch. Um, additionally, I wanted to point these out. Traditionally, on on military vehicles, these are flare and counter, mostly smoke, and in some cases even countermeasure launchers. So we'll have to wait and see what these are. But most likely, these are deployable smoke that you can pop to protect you. So if you uh, are seeing that there's incoming threats, like a guided missile or some other system, you could pop smoke and try to move backwards, forwards, turn. Uh, to try to buy yourself a, a, a chance at surviving the hit or making it so it doesn't hit a critical weak point on the specific part of the vehicle. Also, one last thing, all of these moving hydraulic parts, I'm worried, uh, once physicalized damage is in-game, uh, that these once these are broken, will they not be able to move out of the way so you can't get in to repair the components and such? I would imagine they have some type of emergency mode where they're stuck open, I hope. Uh, which has its own problems, obviously, uh, but having them stuck closed would be a very big, very, very big problem. Uh, maybe the tier two. Oh, that's another reason to have a long arm, additional long arm here. It would be nice to be able to have a uh, repair tool, a tier two repair tool right here. And of course, batteries for it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All of our higher detail, um, tertiary details that will go into it later. Everything from the way the doors open on the tank uh to the cockpit itself when you go inside this thing it's like stepping into a mech it's completely those mfds are pretty nice i'm going to go backwards a little bit here i like how much mfd space it has this is this looks like the open and close system and the uh, the lighting system controls that you see in ships right now now these obviously might be subject to change uh but uh from what they said in the the isc all Invicus all vehicle roundtable, all ship roundtable. Um, the ship teams were noting that this was deep into development. This is not concept art, and this is probably close to what we're dealing with then, if I could extrapolate from that. So I'm guessing that it'll have the same type of systems we're used to uh, from the ship. And then these MFDs are going to have a few changes, I'm sure, to move them around a little bit. But there is a, a good amount of MFD space. That's important because the comms can be put up, your targeting can be put up, your status of your vehicle, like power plant and moving things around, or your shielding, if it has it, uh, would all be in here. So it's nice to see. Maybe one last MFD would be nice over here. But uh, yeah. Also, I'm curious how the visibility works. Aside from hitting F4, um, what would be in, uh, in opening the advanced external camera? What would be the visibility when you're looking down the turret when you're driving around? Um, I would, I hope this is some sort of uh, virtual display where it shows you, you know, it has cameras on the exterior of the vehicle and shows you where you're driving. Into a mech. It's completely different from nice. any other vehicle I've seen in this game. My favorite thing about the Storm is going to be the role of it. The Nova is a very, very big tank, it requires three people. It's got that big size five cannon. You don't always need a size five cannon. Some people may disagree, but I don't think you do. The storm is a little bit quicker. Only requires one person. It kind of sits it's in a really good spot series. between something very quick, like a cyclone, and something a little bit more punchy, like the Nova. I'm excited the progress that the team has made on this. It's been a real beauty to work on.
and it should be a lot of fun for the players too. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned that the RSI Lynx is the new benchmark for traveling planet side in comfort and style. That the tumble storm says you can blow stuff up and look slick as all heck while doing it. Jared's right. And I, I would say that the tumble is an interesting vehicle. I think it's got a lot of potential. I think this is going to be a winner. Although it's a question of which people are going to want to use this compared to a Nova. I think Anova is due for a pass eventually. I, I think that the uh, the use case that they pointed out where there was issues with the Nova is a little disingenuous because eventually those will be fixed. They're not going to allow the Nova to be useless ground ground side. It's important. It's an important vehicle, and it's not going anywhere. Yes, it requires a crew of three to be completely effective. You could technically skeleton crew it with two on the Nova. And I think that would be more how most people use it, especially in a pinch. Hey, org, we got to get people in the air. We got to get people in the tank. Uh, the outpost is under attack. And that, that combined arms concept is where the Nova is really going to shine. It has serious shields, serious armor, and it has a serious size 5 weapon system on board. And especially if you start losing the air war above the outpost... And they, if the enemy somehow doesn't have bombers or they, they basically your fighters canceled out the bombers or scared them off, etc., and the ground war will commence or you have enough anti-air turrets to, to take out the air systems, then they're going to need to win the ground war. That's when I see the Nova as whoever has the Nova wins. Um, the Storm is just, I don't see it as a frontal assault type vehicle. But is that really where most of SC is? I, I think that's something to be said for a, a vehicle that has a pair of size threes, energy weapons that don't have a lot of uh, need to be, uh, you know, resupplied. Um, at the time right now, ground vehicles drive around forever, basically, without being refueled. In the future, I'm sure there'll be some fuel, as they've said and hinted to a few times, but um, they just don't require that much work. Additionally, I... You, you always keep the turret pointed ahead, at, ahead, and in some cases, depending on the vehicle, you could spin the turret backwards if necessary to get it in and out of the, out of the ship. Uh, your crew will know how to do that. It is a good point that the Storm will fit on more ships. It has a smaller profile. It is still pretty wide, which gives it a nice off-roading capacity, but also limits it on certain ships. Um, and I guess we're going to have to wait and see exactly how this thing pans out. Even though it's deep in the development cycle, I still don't feel confident in saying it will fit on this ship and I've scaled it up. I'm sure there's people that have already copy and pasted it into different ship models, but I am not going to be one of those people. I, I want to actually drive it in at least the PTU into a ship and show you that way I can stand by, you know, this is what you should consider. And uh, for your org, uh, I don't see this ship, uh, this... Uh, in general, I see this vehicle as important if you have the right ship to carry it. Um, the Liberator, the Hercules, these are its bread and butter. But, like I just got done saying, we can't know for certain every ship it will fit on. Um, in general, in general, the, the policy I'm going to follow until I can test it myself is wherever a Nova fits, this thing will fit. And then just be happy that it fits anywhere else after testing it. So, if, for example, the 600i Explorer would be well suited for a storm. If you don't want to run a Nova, you don't always have a three person crew, being able to pull this out and uh, explore <laughs> the countryside in very protected style would be pretty slick. I don't think this thing is going to be as fast as they're hinting at. They're talking recon, they're talking all of these things. It's not, it's going to be faster than a Nova. Uh, post nerf Nova on speed anyway Nova was the fastest vehicle one, one of the fastest vehicles in the game for a while which was really awkward and weird um, this ship this vehicle will obviously be faster than the post nerf Nova but I doubt it will be as fast as a cyclone and one of the cyclones they cited right here the cyclone MT does require a two-person crew to operate but it does include missiles and a cannon on the rooftop although nowhere near the size of size 3 dual auto cannons. So take that what you will. Storm's got a place. If it's in your fleet, it is probably going to be more of a buy-in game for many, and especially for orgs, it's going to be a buy-in game. And that's kind of the game with a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, you need to start considering what do you actually need 
and what to start talking with your org, start talking with your with your long term buddies, um, start talking about time zones. Hey, if we're all in the same time zone and Bob likes to collect ground vehicles and really loves ground vehicles and loves PvP on on a first person shooter PvP, maybe that person can take uh, take really charge of that while everyone else is talking about logistics uh, ships and how we're actually going to move these ground vehicles around and then planning what we're actually going to do with them. Um, obviously, this is still in its infancy. Until there's outpost and valuable items on those outposts at the rigor, at the ri at the edges of space, I don't see it as that critical that these ground vehicles are in the game or not. They're more for RP. They're more for fun. They're more to break things up. It may give you something else to do. But in the future, these are going to become very, very serious. Uh, once again, it all depends on air defenses at outposts. And really, if they can be very, very strong, you will need proper ground weapon systems and a method to deploy them near where things are getting shot at but not quite underneath the curtain of that air defense system um in order to take them out and um i don't know i don't really know i i think i think we're to wait and see how that's all going to come out because it's a lot of ifs that's a lot of maybes and it's a lot of stuff that's still up in the air but exciting vehicle i don't think you can go wrong with a storm unless you like convert a ship with a quantum drive to this thing through a CCU um, and then sit on it. I, I really don't think it, that that's worth it. But if you're looking to pick something up, go for it. And if you're looking, especially in a patch or two when it hits the in-game store, then I wholeheartedly recommend it. That's how I'm going to pick one up myself. All right. Thanks for sticking around. This has been a quick just take on this ISC covering the storm. I have a video in the cards here at the end covering the uh the, the links uh which is covered in game actually which is i think is i think is a better way to cover it uh when, when possible but it's not a concept that's a straight to flyable so to speak straight to drivable let's call it <laughs> and then also my video on the isc all ships roundtable that i alluded to in this video i would highly recommend checking out that coverage commentary and everything else because it does include the storm discussions and how this thing came to life and how the teams are working on it Wish y'all a great night.